Hello and welcome to 10forums.com. In this video, I will show you how I install Windows 10 Preview in an Oracle VirtualBox virtual machine. So why am I doing this? Well, the main reason is it's a safe way to try out Windows 10 Preview. Uh, VirtualBox is currently free, it actually runs on quite a wide range of, of early Windows versions, um, and Windows 10 Preview itself is currently free. So it's a, a low risk way of trying out Windows 10 Preview without risking uh, breaking my host computer. So, to start this, these are the things you will need. Uh, you'll need a computer with, I say, at least 4 gigabytes of RAM and a fair amount of disk space. You probably need about 40 gigabytes. Um, you need a recent version of Oracle VirtualBox because the early versions don't know about Windows 10. Um, you'll need that installed on your computer. I've got the link there of, of how you find that. And then also you need a Windows 10.iso installation file. And I've been using the 10 forums link to find that. For this purpose, the 30, I'm using the 32-bit version because that works better in limited amounts of memory, which is all I'm going to give this virtual machine. Um, I'd also note that this Windows 10 ISO file uh, was due to expire in October 2015. So, the first step is to create a new virtual machine. Now to do this we'll need to select which operating system we're going to use, which is going to be Windows 10. We're going to assign some RAM memory to it, um, and I suggest give it no more than half of the RAM on the host machine. So if you've got four gigabytes of RAM on the host machine, make sure that the guest only has two gigabytes or less. Then we're going to create the virtual disk file. Um, if you use a fixed size virtual disk, it's slower to set up, but it's faster once running. Um, because the performance is better, you didn't have to ask for extra, extra disk space every time you create a new file or something. So, pick size I'm going to use in this case. So, we're going to start VirtualBox, and then from that, we're going to select New to create a new virtual machine. I'm going to pick the 32 bit version of Windows 10 and give it a name. It's going to be Build 10122 that I'm using, so I'll put that in part of the name. Then we're going to assign some memory to it. I'm going to give it 2048, which seems to run quite happily. Then I'm going to create a virtual disk file. I'm also selecting a VHD format because that's more easy to, to share with other, other bits of Windows. And I'm going to use a fixed size. This means it'll take some time to set up. And in fact, I've sped it up, but it took eight minutes to set this file up. But once it's going, it should mean that the performance in the um, and the virtual machine itself is better because it's not trying to ask the host machine for new disk space every time it creates a file or uses that memory space. So there are some settings which are which are optional you can change in general and system. So, things I'm going to select, I'm going to go for a shared clipboard, um, which means you can copy and paste from the ghost host to the guest and vice versa, which is useful. This requires the guest editions, which we'll come to later. Um, I also prefer having virtual box memories at the top of the screen. You can leave it at the bottom if you want. The other thing is I'm going to set the system to boot in EFI or UEFI mode, which is probably more common in um, machines that you buy these days. So, I've done that to simulate that. So I'm going to select General. I'm going to click, click the option about the shared clipboard. I want it to be bi-directional. And then I'm also going to show the menus at the top of the screen. Then in System there's an option to enable EFI, which I can select or unselect. I'm going to leave it selected for this. Right, the, the last three sections I'm going to change options in, uh, there's a storage setting. We need to tell it where the .iso file is that we're going to load. That's very important, otherwise we, the machine won't boot. Um, for this purpose, I'm going to disable the network link as far as installation, for the installation pro process. Um, I find some things work better because it's easier to start with a local account. 
um, and then for shared folders I'm going to create a folder to be shared between the host and the guest machine so I can copy files easily from one to the other. So I'm going to select storage and then there's a controller for the virtual CD-ROM and here I can choose a CD or DVD ISO file Go to navigate to the folder where it is, I think it's on C temp in there in this case. Then I'm going to change the network option to disable the network adapter for now. And then the last thing I'm going to do is set up a shared folder so I can share, file, I can share files between the host and guest machines. So I'm going to navigate to a folder and pick the folder that I want. And then I should be able to access that. Once I've installed the guest editions, I'll be able to install it, access that from both machines. Now we're going to start the normal Windows 10 setup process. Um, so I'll select the option to start in VirtualBox. Um, then when it starts booting, I'll need to press a key to make it boot from the virtual CD or DVD. Um, somewhere in the process you'll get a message from VirtualBox about mouse capture. If this is the first time you've used VirtualBox you might see that. Um, then I'm going to go through the initial setup screens, agree to the license term. Then when I get to choose where I want to install it, I'm going to choose a custom um, setting and then select some unall unallocated space. Then I'm going to let setup proceed as normal and it'll restart probably a few times. So we start to um, start the virtual machine. We put a because we put the ISO file in, it's got something to boot from. So I've got the option to boot from that CD or DVD. I press the key to do that, um, and then it starts the normal install process. Now I've, I've speed this up at various points. You see, there's a message about mouse pointer integration from VirtualBox. If I've not used this before, um, so I'm going to respond to that. Then I'm going to start the normal uh, window setup. So I'm going to click next and then after that comes up. I should click on install now. So now we um, we get the normal uh, pre-release license terms to agree to. So you can read those if you want, and then if you want to you can accept the license terms. Now we need to pick where to install it, and we're going to make a custom installation. I'm going to choose the unallocated space, which is all there is on this virtual machine, and then click next. And from that point on, we'll just leave it to, to do its installation process. Again, I've sped, speeded this up. So we've arrived at the, the um, screens within the setup which allow you to customize settings. Um, you can either use express settings or, your cust or the customize option depending on your preference. Um, my network is disabled so I can only create a, a local account at this stage. If it wasn't you might be able to create a Microsoft account here. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to create an ID and password which I've not shown and then I'm going to click next and then after that we wait for the rest of the setup to complete and it should show a desktop. So it's up to you what you do here. I'm using customized settings and I'm changing various settings on these screens. Um, you can do what you want in this, at this point. Uh, 
and many of you will recognize the, um, the high message that appears at the start of the setup. Um, again, we'll just let that proceed and we're going to speed this video up. And we have a Windows 10 desktop. So we have a working version of Windows. It's running in the virtual machine. Uh, the only thing that I quite like to do at this stage is to use the guest editions. Now these enable things like screen resizing. They let you use full screen in some cases where you couldn't without it. Um, you can share the clipboard between the host and guest machine and also share folders. So what we're going to do is select the option from the VirtualBox memory to insert the guest edition CD image then use File Explorer to select that virtual CD drive and run the installer. Then, at the end of that, we're going to select the option to reboot. Now you're going to try retesting after the reboot by trying to resize the screen and see what happens. So, I'm going to use the menu at the top of the screen. If you're running this full screen, you might need to hover near the, the top of the, um, the actual visible area. Because I'm running a window, I can see the menu more easily. Um, and then devices, I've got insert guest edition CD image. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use File Explorer to find the, the CD. Then once I've done that, I open the CD drive and then I run the, the installer, which is this, this application here. I'm going to run as administrator. And then I've got to go through the wizard. Just click, click, select the defaults, click next. And leave the default there. And there's a couple of messages you need to, to answer to give your authority to install drivers. And at the end of the process, we get the option to reboot, uh, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to click finish and it should reboot. So once the machine's restarted, we're going to test uh, what happens if we resize the, the screen window see how it uh, adapts to that. Then the other thing I'm going to try is see if I can use shared folders. However, I'll discover that won't work because I haven't enabled the network. I've forgotten to enable that. So we'll see that and then after that we'll show you how to enable it. Right, so we need to shut down and enable the network. So to do this, I'm going to use the shutdown at the command prompt. I'm going to use shutdown slash s slash t then a zero. In this case, you don't need it, but in some other scenarios, um, you have issues with fast startup, um, especially in EFI mode, which makes it hard to, for instance, to boot from another drive, which you might want to do. So that's quite a good habit to shut down this way. Then when we get to network settings, we're going to enable the network adapter again start the virtual machine and connect to the network and show that we can now access shared folders. So I'm going to bring up the command prompt, right click there, and type in the command shutdown slash s slash t and then a space then a zero. Then 
in VirtualBox itself, I'm going to go to the network settings and enable the network adapter. Once I've done that, I'm then going to start the machine and see what happens. Once the machine started, it asks us if we want to connect to the network um, and find other PCs on the network, which I do, because it's on a home network. And then once we've done that, we can look at File Explorer. We should be able to, to navigate using the network um, to see the shared folder. So I can see VBox SVR is the parent machine, and then on that we can see the shared folder. And that's it. We now have a running uh, copy of Windows 10 Preview installed using VirtualBox.